The volume and velocity of ransom attacks aren't slowing down anytime soon. 2021 was a breakout year for ransomware as the cybersecurity attack vector wreaked havoc on individuals and organizations around the world. And the dire warning is that this trend will continue in 2022 and beyond. Hi, I'm Lena Bongale, Manager of Data Protection and Governance at TD Bank. In this presentation, I will talk about the trends in ransomware that started in 2021 and will continue this year and beyond. I will talk about the latest ransomware types and emerging ransomware groups. I won't just focus on the ransomware trends. I will also talk about the trends evolving in dealing with this vicious type of cyber attack. I will then briefly talk about the three ransomware distribution methods popular with attackers and then end with steps you can take to prevent ransomware. While ransomware is not a new cybersecurity risk, it is a threat that received attention at the highest levels of government. Ransomware affected people's ability to get health care, put gas in vehicles and even buy groceries. The financial effects of ransomware also became particularly pronounced in 2021. Attacks hit supply chains, causing more widespread damage than an attack against a single individual. There has been an increased response from government and technology vendors to help stem the wide tide of ransomware attacks. The coming 12 months will bring increasingly aggressive cybercrime act activities as malicious actors continue to pivot their ransomware attacks from data encryption to data exfiltration and with much of the workforce remaining at home until the second quarter at least, the cybersecurity challenges that were amplified by COVID-19 will persist for the time being. The most significant trend to expect from ransomware in the coming years is increased attacks on utilities and public infrastructure because they are critical institutions with access to large sums of money and they often use old or outdated cybersecurity technology. As ransomware technology continues to advance, the technological margin between attackers and public targets has the potential to grow even wider. Within these targeted public sectors, specifically healthcare, attacks may be more costly in the coming years than ever before. Predictions also indicate a growing focus on small businesses that run outdated security software. As the number of IoT business devices grows, small businesses can no longer think that they are too small to be attacked. The attack vector is growing exponentially and the security methods are not. For the same reason, home devices are predicted to be progressively more likely targets. The increased use of mobile devices also intensifies the use of social engineering attacks that open the door for a ransomware attack. Social engineering attack methods such as phishing, baiting, quid pro quo, pretexting, and piggybacking prey on manipulating human psychology. One IBM study claimed that users are three times more likely to respond to a phishing attack on a mobile device than a desktop, in part because this is where users will most likely see the message first. Verizon also published research stating that the success of social engineering on mobile devices is likely because smaller screens limit the amount of detailed information that is displayed. Mobile devices compensate for this with smaller notifications and one-tap options for responding to messages and open links, which makes responding more efficient but also expedites the process of falling prey to a phishing attack. Another trend is the increased stealing of sharing of code. For example, major ransomware campaigns Aryuk and Herms were found to have similar code. Officials at first assumed that both ransomware variants originated from the same group of ransomware actors, but later found that much of Aryuk's code was simply copied from Herms. In fact, 
Arik originated from a separate, unrelated group of threat actors from another country. According to statistics, more than 1,000 companies had their data leaked after not giving in to ransomware demands during 2020. And this trend, which was first observed at the end of 2019 and into 2021, will accelerate in 2022, becoming a primary cybercrime tactic. Such double extortion attacks attempt to maximize financial gains for cyber criminals by putting additional pressure on their victims to pay up by threatening to release proprietary or embarrassing data. The now defunct Maze Group, which had close links to many other operations, accounted for about 50% of all such attacks last year. More than any year in recent memory, 2020 posed a tremendous number of challenges to IT professionals, organizations, and the service providers who support them, said Stas Protosov, Acronis co-founder and technology president. He went on to say that what we have seen is how quickly bad actors are adjusting their attacks to the new IT landscape. By analyzing the activity, attacks and trends we have detected and clearly presenting our findings, we hope to empower our partners and help the IT community at large to prepare for the threats that are on the horizon. Acronis' researchers also suspect the ransomware operators will look for new victims next year and adopt a more automated approach to their work. They are also likely to focus on targets that provide a bigger return on investment. Big cloud providers and managed service providers will be more at risk because breaking into one network to steal data from many victims is far more profitable than attacking just one business. In this context, a very important point I would like to mention is that Acronis also reported an increasing problem with legacy cybersecurity systems becoming unfit for purpose. Blocking new forms of malware and ransomware has rendered traditional antivirus technology is essentially obsolete and unable to keep up with a vastly increased sophisticated and speedy evolution of such threats. The average lifespan of a malware sample in 2020 was just over three days, and the advent of automation means that the number of samples in the wild will inevitably climb. IBM has noted the top emerging ransomware trends. The first involves ransomware threat actors reaching out to a victim's partner network after a supply chain attack and using these business partners to pressurize the primary victim into paying the ransom. The second trend which IBM refers to as triple extortion tactic is an evolution of commonplace double extortion tactics in which a ransom actor encrypts a victim's data before stealing and threatening to leak the said data. The third extortion tactics is to inflict a DDoS attack on the victim. In this type of attack, threat actors encrypt and steal data and also threaten to engage in a DDoS attack against the affected organization. This kind of attack is particularly problematic for organizations because victims have their networks held hostage with two kinds of malicious attacks, often simultaneously, and are then further victimized by the theft and often leak of the data. Regardless of attack type, phishing led the pack in attack vectors. 41% of attacks use phishing to exploit victims, up from 33% in 2020. During penetration testing, IBM X-Force found that sim simulated targeting phishing campaigns achieved an average click rate of 17.8%. When campaigns added phone calls, the effectiveness tripled to a click rate of 53.2%. Vulnerability exploitation was the second most common attack vector, 34% seen in 2021, followed by stolen credentials 9% and brute force 6%. Stolen credentials being 9% was particularly notable as it was utilized in 18% of attacks the previous year. 
IBM Executive Security Advisor Limor Kassem said, neither of these trends are especially common at the moment due to the additional complexity required for each. This is because the point isn't just to get the victim to pay, but to pay quickly. Attackers realize that certain techniques yield better results and focused on those approaches. Instead of attacking a single victim, supply chain attacks extended the blast radius. A prime example of a 2021 ransomware attack is the Kaseya attack, which affected at least 1,500 of its managed service providers and customers. In the past, ransomware was about attackers encrypting information found on a system and then demanding a ransom in exchange for a decryption key. But with double extortion, attackers also exfiltrate the data to a separate location. There it can be used for other purposes, including leaking the information to a public website if a payment is not made. Gone are the days when every attacker had to write their own ransomware code and run a unique set of activities. RAS or uh, Ransom as a Service is a pay-for-use malware. It enables attackers to use a platform that provides the necessary ransomware code and operational infrastructure to launch and maintain a ransomware campaign. Attacking unpatched system was not a new trend for 2021, but it is one that continues to be an issue year after year. While there are ransomware attacks that do make use of novel zero-day vulnerabilities, most continue to abuse the known vulnerabilities on unpatched systems. While ransomware attacks can infect organizations in different ways, in 2021, some form of phishing email was often a root cause. Ransomware didn't start recently and it won't end anytime soon either. Ransomware will likely continue to evolve in a few different ways. I will talk about some predictions on the directions the ransomware will take in the years ahead. Governments will be more involved. Gartner predicted that nation states are likely to enact legislation about ransomware payments. In 2021, Gartner estimated that only 1% of global governments have rules around ransomware, with a forecast for that to grow to 30% by 2025. More extortion to come. Security vendor Beyond Trust predicted that there will be a variation on double extortion with ransomware in 2022 as attackers try to execute more personalized attacks. Rise of intermittent encryption. In August 2021, security vendor Sophos first detected a new approach inside ransomware known as intermittent encryption. Intermittent encryption only encrypts parts of files, making them appear as corrupt data. The approach can bypass many forms of current ransomware protection and detection. Ransomware groups shift from big game hunting. Ransomware groups are redirecting focus from big game hunting as law enforcement action accelerates according to a joint cybersecurity advisory from authorities in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia. The cybersecurity and infrastructure security agencies, along with the FBI, the National Security Agency, the Australian Cybersecurity Center, and the National Cybersecurity Center, co published a blog that detailed collective observations of ransomware trends in 2022. Two significant takeaways were a global increase in sophisticated, high-impact ransomware incidents against critical infrastructure and a decrease in big game targets. As described in the advisory, big game organizations are perceived high-value organizations and or those that provide critical services. While well, authorities in the US and Australia observed attacks against these types of organizations in the first half of 2021 that yielded substantial payouts, including the colonial pipeline company JBS Food and Kaseya Limited, ransomware actors shifted tactics in the latter half of the year. 
The advisory attributes the shift to U.S. authorities disrupting ransomware groups in mid-2021. One example occurred in June when the FBI seized back a portion of the ransom paid by Colonial. The advisory also stated, subsequently the FBI observed ransomware threat actors redirecting ransomware efforts away from big game and towards mid-sized victims to reduce scrutiny. CrowdStrike initially documented the use of big game hunting in 2018 and referred to it as low-volume, high-return criminal activity. In 2019, the FBI issued a public service announcement warning a high-impact ransomware attack against U.S. businesses and organizations. It highlighted a decline in broad indiscriminate ransomware campaigns but an increase in losses from ransomware attacks. While the U.S. observed the shift and the NCSC UK saw some big game victims, the ASCS saw the targeting of Australian organizations of all sizes, including critical services and big game throughout 2021. Among all three countries, significant attacks against critical infrastructures increased. Incidents involving ransomware infected 14 of the 16 U.S critical infrastructure sectors last year. The advisory said that although most ransomware incidents against critical infrastructure affect business, information and technology systems, the FBI observed that several ransomware groups have developed code designed to stop critical infrastructure or industrial processes. That aligns with a report by Dragos released last year that stated threats against critical infrastructure increased threefold in 2020. It cited several challenges in securing those types of organizations, including a lack of security teams and a suitable common vulnerability scoring system. Another notable trend identified in the advisory was sharing victim information. Eurasian ransomware groups have shared victim information with each other, diversifying the threats targeted to organizations. One example occurred after Black Matter seized operations, which reportedly stemmed from pressure by local authorities. After its shutdown, the group transferred its existing victims to infrastructure owned by another group known as Lockbit 2.0. In October 2021, Conti ransomware actors began selling access to victims' networks, enabling follow-on attacks by other cyber threat actors. Additional ways ransomware groups profited last year included targeting the cloud and managed service providers along with attacks against the supply chain. Operators also took advantage of timing by targeting organizations on weekends and or on holidays. The joint advisory offered mitigation steps like maintaining up-to-date systems, implementing a training program, and when it comes to the cloud, backing up to multiple locations and requiring multi-factor authentication for access and data encryption. The proper outlets to report ransomware incidents for all three countries was also listed. The FBI and National Security Agency issued a joint advisory over the threat posed by Black Matter Ransomware Group. First landing on the radar of security providers in July of last year, Black Matter operates a ransomware-as-a-service RAS model where independent cyber criminals infiltrate networks and install the ransomware on servers and PCs. The RAS providers then handle the notification and ransom negotiation, kicking over a portion of any eventual ransom payment to the affiliate hacker. As with most of the current generation of ransomware operations, Black Matter further extorts its victims to meet the ransomware demand by threatening to publish all of the stolen data should they not pay. Threat analysts found that Black Matter has ties to both our evil and dark side ransomware crews, something that would make sense given the recent trend of ransomware groups intermingling and spreading both funding and members amongst one another. The FBI, NSA and CISA maintain that organizations should hold out against ransomware demands and refuse to pay. 
Paying a ransomware may embolden adversaries to target additional organizations, encourage other cyber criminal actors to engage in the distribution of ransomware, and or may fund illicit activities. Paying the ransom does not guarantee that a victim's files will be recovered. Rather, the government agencies suggest companies adopt best practices to protect against malware in general, such as maintaining and isolating system backups, strictly limiting access privileges, and timing out administrator account logins, and staying up to date with security patches and system updates. According to the Joint Advisory, black matter threat actors typically use previously compromised credentials to gain access to victims' environments. The attackers weaponize lightweight directory access protocol and server message block protocols to access the network's active directory in order to discover all hosts on the network, which are then encrypted with ransomware. And it's not just Windows systems that are threatened by black matter. How do ransomware attacks work? Ransomware kits on the deep web have enabled cyber criminals to purchase and use software tools to create ransomware with specific capabilities. They can then generate this malware for their own distribution with ransoms paid to their Bitcoin accounts. As with much of the rest of the information technology world, it is now possible for those with little or no technical background to order inexpensive ransomware as a service and launch attacks with minimal efforts. One of the more common methods of delivering ransomware attacks is through phishing email. An attachment the victim thinks they can trust is added to an email as a link. Once the victim clicks on the link, the malware in the file begins to download. Other more aggressive forms of ransomware will exploit security holes to infect a system so they do not have to rely on tricking users. The malware can also be spread through chat messages, removable universal serial bus USB drives, or browser plugins. Once the malware is in the system, it will begin encrypting the victim's data. It will then add an extension to the files, making them inaccessible. Once this is done, the files cannot be decrypted without a key known only by the attacker. The ransomware will then display a message to the victim explaining that files are inaccessible and can only be accessed again upon paying a ransom to the attackers, commonly in the form of Bitcoin. Now that we have seen how ransomware attacks work, let's take a look at some of the most prominent types of ransomware out there. Attackers may use one of several different approaches to extort digital currency from their victims. Scareware. This malware poses as security software or tech support. Ransomware victims may receive pop-up notifications saying malware has been discovered on their system. Security software that the user does not own would not have access to this information. Not responding to this will not do anything except lead to more pop-ups. Screen lockers, also known simply as lockers, these are a type of ransomware designed to completely lock users, users out of their computers. Upon starting up the computer, a victim may see what looks to be an official government seal, leading the victim into believing that they are subject of an official inquiry. After being informed that unlicensed software or illegal web content has been found on the computer, the victim is given instructions on how to pay an electronic fine. However, official government uh, organizations would not do this. They instead would go through proper legal channels and procedures. Encrypting ransomware. Otherwise known as data kidnapping attacks, these give the attacker access to and encrypt the victim's data and ask for a payment to unlock the files. Once this happens, there is no guarantee that the victim will get access to their data back even if they negotiate for it. 
the attacker may also encrypt files on infected devices and make money by selling a product that promises to help the victim unlock files and prevent future malware attacks. Docsware With this malware, an attacker may threaten to publish victim data online if the victim does not pay a ransom. Master Boot Record Ransomware with this, the entire hard drive is encrypted, not just the user's personal files, making it impossible to access the operating system. Mobile ransomware. This ransomware affects mobile devices. An, att an attacker can use mobile ransomware to steal data from a phone or lock it and require a ransom to return the data or unlock the device. While early instances of these attacks sometimes merely locked access to the web browsers, or the Windows desktop and did so in ways that often could be fairly easily reverse engineered and reopened. Hackers have since created versions of ransomware that use strong public key encryption to deny access to files on the computer. Screen lockers and encrypting ransomware are the two main types of ransomware. Knowing the difference between them will help an organization determine what to do next in the case of an infection. As I described earlier, screen lockers completely lock users out of their computers until a payment is made. Screen lockers deny a user access to the inflicted system and files. However, the data is not encrypted. In Windows systems, a screen locker also blocks access to system components such as Windows Task Manager and Registry Editor. The screen is locked until the payment is made. Typically, the victim is given instructions for how to pay. Screen lockers also try to trick the users into paying by posing as an official government organization. Encrypting ransomware is one of the most effective forms of ransomware today. An attacker gains access to and encrypts the victim's data, asking for payment to unlock the files. Attackers use complex encryption algorithms to encrypt all data saved on the device. A note is commonly left on the inflicted system with information about how to retrieve the encrypted data after payment. Compared to screen lockers, encrypting ransomware puts the victim's data in more immediate danger and there is no guarantee of the data returning to the victim after negotiation. In both cases, the victim may receive a pop-up message or email ransom note warning that if the demanded sum is not paid by a specific date, the private key required to unlock the data will be made public. Who is targeted by ransomware? Ransomware targets can vary from a single individual, a small to medium-sized business SMB, or an enterprise-level organization to an entire city. Public institutions are especially vulnerable to ransomware because they lack the cybersecurity to defend against it adequately. The same is true for SMBs. In addition to spotty cybersecurity, Public institutions have irreplaceable data that could cripple them if made unavailable. This makes them more likely to pay. What are the effects of ransomware on businesses? The impact of a ransomware attack on a business can be devastating. According to safeatlast.com, ransomware cost businesses over $8 billion in the past year and over half of all malware attacks were ransomware attacks. Some effects include loss of a business's data, downtime as a result of compromised infrastructure, lost productivity as a result of downtime, loss of potential revenue, costly recovery efforts and potentially outweigh the ransom itself, long-term damage to both data and data infrastructure, damage to a business's previous reputation as being a secure business, and loss of customers, and in worst cases, the potential for personal harm if the business deals in public services such as healthcare. How do you prevent ransomware attacks? To protect against ransomware threats and other types of cyber extortion, security experts urge users to do the following. 
backup computing devices regularly, inventory all assets, update software including antivirus software, have end users avoid clicking on links in emails or opening email attachments from strangers, avoid paying ransoms, avoid giving out personal information, do not use unknown USB sticks, only use known download sources. Personalize anti-spam settings. Monitor the network for suspicious activity. Use a segmented network. Adjust security software to scan compressed and archive files. Disable the web for after spotting a suspicious process on a computer. While ransomware attacks may be nearly impossible to stop, Individuals and organizations can take important data protection measures to ensure that data is minimal and recovery damage is minimal and recovery is as quick as possible. Strategies include compartmentalize authentication systems and domains. Keep up-to-date storage snapshots outside the primary storage pool. Enforce hard limits on who can access data and when access is permitted. Should you pay the ransom? Most law enforcement agencies recommend not paying ransomware attackers, citing that it will only invite hackers to commit more ransomware attacks. However, when an organization faces a possibility of weeks or longer of recovery, the thought of lost profits may begin to sink in and an organization may start to consider the price of the ransom compared to the value of the data that has been encrypted. According to Trend Micro, while 66% of companies state they would not pay a ransom, about 65% do pay the ransom when faced with the decision. The attackers set the price point so it's worth their time but low enough that it will be cheaper for the targeted organization to pay the attackers off rather than restore the encrypted data. Even though it would be understandable as to why some organizations would want to pay the ransom, it is still not recommended for a number of reasons. The first and foremost reason to not to pay a ransom is remember that you are dealing with criminals. There is no guarantee that the attackers will follow through with their word and decrypt the data. A Kaspersky security bulletin from 2016 claimed that 20% of businesses that chose to pay the ransom demanded of them did not get their files back. Potential for scareware. The ransom message could be used without having access an organization's data. Bad decryption key or one that barely works. After paying the ransom, the decryptor an organization receives may only work enough for the criminals to say they followed through with what they promised. Possibility of repeated ransom demands. Cyber criminals will now know that the targeted organization has a history of paying ransoms. How to remove ransomware? There is no guarantee that victims can stop a ransomware attack and regain their data. However, there are methods that may work in some cases. For example, victims can stop and reboot their systems in safe mode, install an anti-malware program, scan the computer and restore the computer to a previous non-infected state. Victims could also restore their systems from backup files stored on a separate disk. If they are in the cloud, then victims could reformat their disk and restore from a previous backup. Windows users specifically could use System Restore, which is a function that rolls Windows devices and their system files back to a certain mark point in time, in this case, before the computer was infected. For this to work, System Restore needs to be enabled beforehand so that it can mark a place in time for the computer to return to. Windows enables System Restore by default. For a general step-by-step -step process in identifying and removing ransomware, follow these recommendations. 
create a system backup and backup all important or integral files. If an organization cannot recover its files, it will be able to restore them from a backup. Ensure system optimization or cleanup software does not remove the infection or other necessary ransomware files. The files must first be isolated and identified. Quarantine the malware using anti-malware software. Also make sure the attackers did not create a backdoor that can allow them to access the same system at a later date. Identify the ransomware type and exactly which encryption method was used. Decryptor and ransomware recovery tools can help determine the type of ransomware. Once identified, ransomware recovery tools can be used to decrypt files. Because of the different and evolving methods of ransomware, there is no absolute guarantee that the tool will be able to help. Ransomware recovery tools include products such as McAfee, Ransomware Recover, and Trend Microfile Decryptor. So what's next in ransomware? The questions to ask would be, what will the future of ransomware bring? Has it reached its tipping point? What will the next big attack vector be? Or who will be the next big victim? The future may be unknown, but what is known is that malicious actors will continue to refine their methods to become more sophisticated, efficient and effective. Attackers' tactics and techniques will mature and victims will continue to face locked systems, encrypted files, and ransom demands. And as long as attackers continue to make money, attacks will continue to occur. I hope you enjoyed this presentation as well as it was informative to you. So until next time, stay safe and be well. Goodbye.